Hi, everybody. James Escarcio, Freddie Robledo. It's that time of year, it's, and it's actually the week we've been waiting for. <laughs> um, so we got a lot of moving parts here, folks. So this video we're going to do is going to have nothing to do with Bishop Mott with Damien. We're going to give that its own separate video because it really deserves it. I think, Freddie, because yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the game. It's the game of the year before the playoffs, no doubt. Yeah. And it's got major, and I do think it has major ramifications for the playoffs. So we're gonna we're gonna ease off of that a little bit. We're gonna talk about some of the other games in the area, but first, Freddie, as we always do, we want to review last week. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I just want to. I think the first major narrative, and maybe the only narrative of the week, Freddie, is that St. Francis is pretty stinking good. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, they beat Mir, uh, James. I think it was more of a truth game for Mir. I already knew St. Francis was, was was pretty good, you know, based on what they did against Miracosta in the first week. Uh, I think the game against Damien just got away from them. I think if they play him again, that's a much more competitive game. Um, and Mir is kind of what we thought they might be at the beginning of the year. You know, they played two teams uh, that you look at the LaSalle win now that was that was only, I think, uh, 14 9 or, or, or 12 7. I'm sorry. It was 12 7. You know, LaSalle hasn't won a game yet. They lost to Arcadia. So I, I think Mir is going to be one of those teams that are going to try to fight for a playoff spot in the Pacific League. Um, but, you know, for for St. For St. Francis, it was a game I think that, you know, I expected them to blow out Mir. I just had that feeling. And I think they're going to blow out Los Altos again this week. Uh, they got that game at home. Los Altos is struggling, James. Let's just, let's just be honest. Yep. Um, against this level of teams, we saw LA play against, uh, Glendora and, and, and they got their, you know, their butt handed to them. And, and to me, St. Francis is a similar team to Glendora. So I, I think they really, uh, these are two weeks where, you know, they, they get to sharpen themselves and get ready for that tough Angeles league down the line. And I think Freddie and I was thinking about this too. This, this, this is the reason why a lot of times teams like near what you really do. It is a big challenge, and it's also got major ramifications when you lose to a team like St. Francis because you're always competing for kids. And so when you lose like this, it makes a difference as to where some of the top kids are going to go. It's just that simple. And so when you get beat this bad, there will be, I believe, ramifications down the line, so to speak. Am I right? Well, well, yeah, and you look at for almost two decades, you know, Pasadena has, has paid the price of those ramifications, getting beat by Mir every single year. If you're a football player, where are you going to go? And you, if you live in Pasadena, you were going to go, you were going to go to Mir. If you didn't go there, you were going to Alamany, you were going to St. Francis, some of the neighboring private schools. Pasadena was losing all the talent. Right now, that tide has sort of turned with, you know, you got Maxi, uh, Robert Maxi over there, the assistant coach. And, 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 and I don't like to call these guys uh, recruiters. They attract talent. Um, and, and that's what he's done. He's attracted a lot of that talent to stay in Pasadena. And right now, you know, they're they're the it team in Pasadena. And if Mir doesn't watch it, you're right. They're going to lose players to neighboring Pasadena. They didn't want to lose. They're going to lose them to St. Francis. They're going to lose them to, to Alamany and, you know, out in the other side of the valley. So it, it's it's you're right. These things have uh, they, they can change the landscapes of your program, not just year, but these these next years to come. And right now, Pasadena has has ownership in Pasadena. It is true. And let's just talk about that briefly, Freddie. They, they, uh, they went huge over Harvard Westlake. Um, I mean, Freddie, it wasn't even close. This was like watching the varsity versus the JV on Friday night. Um, I do want to make one observation that must've been one heck of a quarterback room at Monrovia last spring when they had Noah Rodriguez and Caden Taylor, uh, in that room at the same time, battling for that number one spot because both of these guys are really good. And, you know, Caden Taylor, 500 total yards he was involved with. He threw for 366. He rushed for 133. Uh, the, the kid is for real, Fred. Yeah, and, and and this is something I, you know, I don't think you expected. I expected. I, I remember talking to Maxie before the season, and he told me we have this transfer from Monrovia, and I was like you thinking, well, this wasn't the starting quarterback from Monrovia, so maybe they've got a serviceable quarterback. Not only is he, you know, throw out the word serviceable with this kid, he's, he's you know, among the top 20 nationally, statistically. He's the, the number one quarterback passing leader in our area. I mean, I mean, they have they just got one of the best transfers um, of the whole off season when you look at what he's able to do. Um, so yeah, I mean that's just, just a, a major, major pickup. 
And and if he goes down, they've got Hype Grand backing him up, the fabulous freshman. So I think they're in a great, great spot when it comes to their signal callers. And I think they're in a great spot to make a deep run in the playoffs too. If they get the right, the right draw in the right division, I yeah. think they, they're 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 that one team, Freddie, that we we're probably going to have to follow very very closely. They have the week off, and I can tell you, they have Crescent Valley in two weeks. They are absolutely ready, and they want Crescent Valley in the worst way possible. If you thought la- last spring over at the Rose Bowl was was uh, intense. Hey, nothing compared is going to be like in two weeks when they uh, when they host Crescenta Valley. And, and you know, we did the uh, you know I always on Sunday I like to look at the Cal Preps rankings and just kind of see where teams are at. And you know, you, you kind of play with the projections. And you know, I don't know how accurate these are going to be. We're just kind of going down based on sixteen teams per, di- per division. You know, at large bursts will will uh, change that. Automatic qualifiers will tweak that a little bit, but. PHS seems to be on that division five, division six borderline. They'll probably be in one of those divisions, James. And you're right. I think they get in one of those divisions, no matter who else is in it. uh, They're going to have a shot. When you see what, how they played Notre Dame really close without, you know, all of their talent there that day, um, they beat a team like Paraclete. That just tells me they fall in one of those divisions. They can compete. Now, what I don't know is uh, they're going to go, I don't think they're going to lose another game. The Pacific League so is really down this year. You know, they're going to open with Crescenta Valley. And I, Crescenta Valley is not what they've been the past few years. Certainly not the state championship team we saw two years ago or, or CIF championship team. They bowed out of state. They didn't play in the playoffs. Right. But I really think, you know, Arcadia, they might be the next best team in the Pacific League. And we saw what Monrovia did to Arcadia. Maybe it's Mir. I mean, I, I don't know. But I don't see Pasadena losing to anyone – and that strength of schedule, I don't know what it's going to do. Is it going to pull them down? Even if they win, is it going to push them up? That's what I'm going to be watching the next few weeks uh, when it comes to the Cal Preps rankings and PHS. One other team we want to talk about here, Freddie, and it's uh, something I mentioned in today's uh, Rewind is St. Paul. Huge win over uh, Diamond Ranch. Here's another undefeated team. We have eight undefeated teams in our area still, Freddie. Uh, this is the most intriguing one because they probably have the most challenging schedule of the eight teams that are that are undefeated right now, I would think. Yeah, and I thought, I know you interviewed uh, Coach Zepeda, and I thought one of his interesting things that he said, and because they had a really, really bad spring, and I think you asked him about that and contrasting the two seasons. And, and he said, really, that, you know, the club football players that played in the spring, I mean, I mean, it was hard to find that chemistry with guys who were coming in and out. And it sounded like there was some sort of, you know, inner battle just to kind of find themselves. Well, now you have the, you know, now, now these guys, these experienced coaches like Zepeda have the full summer um, to get ready. You know, there, nobody has any advantages over them. He, we've seen that he's built a pretty good program. They played in a championship a few years ago. So they're off to a 4-0 start. Should we be surprised? I was a little surprised based on the spring. I think he kind of explained that. And it's not just an explanation for him. I think Bishop Amat is is also another team who fell into that trap. Who They weren't as club football heavy, and, and they had a tough spring, and, and, and now they're in the fall, and they've won a t- couple of good games that, that weren't against Servite and, and St. John Bosco. But, yeah, maybe we should be surprised. And, and St. Paul now – Look, Diamond Ranch was missing a couple of key players, especially their quarterback. They have not been them, you know, themselves yet. They're going to be a lot better. Um, but I do think uh, St. Francis, I mean, I'm sorry, not saying, St. Paul oh. is in that conversation um, with Loyola, with uh, St. Francis for that Angeles, Angeles League title chase, James. I, I, I think you have to put him in the mix again. It's going to be a great game when St. Francis plays St. Paul over at the pit. You know, in about a month, it's gonna be a tremendous game, and I think I'm gonna be there that night. I really, I really kind of want to be there that night. That's gonna be a really, really great game with major ramifications for the playoffs. All right, Fred, let's get to work quickly here because we do want to talk about the big game on the other video here. We have several other big games that on normal weeks would be like our really headline games. Let's start Thursday night. Um, Ayala is at La Habra. Uh, at the beginning of the season, Fred, we thought this was gonna be really be a big game, but uh, along the way here, something really bad happened, and that's La Habra hasn't developed the way we thought they would. No, and, and I think you can excuse some of those losses early on when they when they got you know beat by Bishop Amont James, and uh, they were taking on some really good teams. But this last loss to Orange, Orange was one and two, and I just felt like you know after the first three, 
this is where they were going to get it back and we were going to see what La Habra is really about. And that was a really, really disappointing loss. Um, so I don't, I don't see, you know, you look at Ayala, Ayala is a, you know, one of the top 20 ranked teams in the, in the Southern section. They're, they're a division two team right now. Um, I, I just think this has a, a one-sided game written all over it. You know, I, I, you know, I saw Bishop Amat run through La Habra. Um, I expect Ayala to, to probably do the same thing. And, you know, this doesn't happen to Frank Mazota coach teams very often. I want to say almost never that, that, that I can remember, um, you know, covering this team since they've been in our area. Uh, but they're going to be 0-5 this week. Um, I, I still think they're going to have a shot to win the Suburban League because uh, well, the freeway, league, the freeway league, the freeway league, right? Yeah, the freeway league, because a lot of the, the – you look at the freeway league, there's no one that really stands out right now. Um, so they might be one of those teams, La Habra James, that were saying, God, this is a terrible, terrible year. They're about to be 0-5. Then they go into their league and win. And then you say, what division are they in? Are they in division six? Is it division seven? Are they in a division where all of a sudden they're they're playing teams like El Rancho in the playoffs who could go undefeated? A team like Monrovia in the playoffs that can go undefeated? And can they beat those teams? So you don't write off the season by any stretch because of the way the divisions are set up. So it truly is these games don't mean anything in the in the big scheme of things all it means is when La Habra gets to the playoffs they're going to be in a more favorable division than they would have been have this been previous years true now remember they still they got to play um Fullerton and they still got to play down Fullerton's down yeah and they still got to play Sunny Hills that's they're also and uh keep an eye on Sonora that's yeah. a team you want to keep your They'll eye finish on. top three no they're question. In the playoffs, they, they, you know, they're going to get an automatic qualifier as a top three. They may be three and seven. They may be two and eight. But again, what division does that put you in at the end of the day? And and that's all that's going to matter. You know, mm-hmm. there, this is a team that's used to playing in division two, three, consistently, consistently. They may fall into division five and six. And are they good enough there? That's going to be the question. It's a huge question, isn't it? And only. Yeah. Only the football gods have the answer to that one. So we're both going to take a Yala here Thursday night. Uh, the other intriguing game on Thursday night is uh, West Covina at Charter Oak. I believe uh, the one and only Fred J. Robledo is planning to be in attendance for the game. Um, Freddie, I'm I'm going to take the upset here. I think West Covina can easily shock the Valley with the win here over Charter Oak. Wow. Wow. That If West Covina beats Charter Oak, and Charter Oak, they would go to, what, two and three? Yes. And and that scenario, and that would be dangerous for Charter Oak because when you go into their league, there's a chance they won't be an automatic qualifier, James. There's a really good chance they won't be an automatic qualifier because you're talking about Ayala in that league, Bonita in that league, and I think those are probably the booking favorites right now to finish first and second. And you also have Altaloma, which is undefeated. So Charter Oak's got to find a win in there. And if, if they lost to West Covina on Friday and, and, and fell to two and three, now you're starting to wonder, hey, you've got to finish 500 or better to even ask for that large at the end of the year. So so this is a this is a big game for them in terms of just trying to make sure that no matter what happens down the line, you get in the playoffs. And look, we know how Charter Oak's a really, really talented team. Let's be honest. They've lost to Glendora. Super great team. They've lost to Chino Hills. Much, much improved team. And and they've won their – they're three and two right now, right? They've won yes. their other th- their other three games. Yes. So they, they, they don't want to fall to 500 right now. West Covina is not Chino Hills. West Covina is not Glendora. Um, this is a game Charter Oak has to win. This They have more talent. It comes in – their talent has to beat West Covina's talent. I know West Covina can frustrate you the way they run the ball and and, and, and the way they get after you. You know, we saw them do that to Monrovia and, and, and give Monrovia a scare. I think that's one of, one of the games you're looking at. But I don't expect Charter Oak to lose this game. In fact, I, I think they're going to beat them by at least two touchdowns or more. I think they have to. They, they kind of got to make a statement. Look, at the beginning of the year, we said Charter Oak should be in that mix with the Glendoras, with the Lucernas, of what we thought were the La Habras or the St. Pauls. And, you know, they, they've – they're right there where we don't know if they're there. We want to put them in that mix or, or are they taking a step back? I, I want to say they're still in that mix. 
They're figuring it out. They Look, they have a great coaching staff. They're going to figure it out. They're going to beat West Covina this week. Who do they play next week, James? I have to take a look here. Okay. Um, um, but at the same time, I think I would, they have a winnable I'll, game this I'll, week. I'll say this, week. though. I'll say this, though, Freddie, and, and I'll do indifference here. I think Mike Majori has this game circled on his schedule, and he wants sure. to see where his team is. And that's the only reason why I, I take it here is because they competed hard against Glendora. It wasn't as, as if they got beaten 50 to nothing. Yeah. It, it was only, I hey, believe, trust 20. me. Trust me, all the pressure's on Charter Oak. They cannot lose this game. If they are who they think they are, if they are who we thought they were, they can't lose this game on Thursday night. Uh, it is a great point. I'm just looking here real fast. Charter Oak is in the mountain. West League, they have Los Altos next week, so that's a win. That's a win. That's what I mean. So so these next two games, they've got to they've got to win them both. If you they've got to win them both. No and, question. And they will. And they will. And and, and they'll get to they'll get to five and two, and then uh, you, you'll have the last three games at the end of the year. That's what I mean. Five and two. You could go zero and three and go to five and five, James. That's why Charter Oak has to win both of those those games. They don't want to go into league with a four and three record and a, and the the chance that you lose those three games. Not only finish fourth, but you have a sub five hundred record and you're out of the playoffs at that point. So they've mm-hmm. got to win one of these next two. I think they're going to win them both. So Freddie's going to take Charter Oak. I'm going to take the upset here with West Covina, which means I'll probably get a call from Don Ferrar later on this week telling me that I'm crazy. Um, Friday night, Freddie, on any other night, any other week, this would be like the premier game of the week. But it just kind of happens to fall at the wrong place at the wrong time. But uh, Monrovia is at San Dimas. Um, Freddie, Monrovia has answered the bell. Yeah, they, you know, they really have, you know, they've, they've, beaten teams that they're supposed to beat really bad they they've they've beaten them bad they beat arcadia bad they have they can put up a lot of points my only question about monrovia and 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 they're in our top 10 i have them there because i think they deserve to be there but there's a big but and they could have lost to west covina and they pulled that out they could have lost to los altos and they pulled that out And, and when you look at what los altos has done to glendora and and how they've kind of been handled by other teams, James. Um, that's the only question I have about Monrovia. Now, to me, this is going to be the toughest team they face to date, San Dimas, whose only loss was a 14-point uh, game to Bonita. Um, this used to be a game, I, I, you know, eight, nine years ago, these teams were in the, the, the old Mid-Valley division, and they played for about three championships, and I want to say Monrovia got them twice. Um, th- there were just some great barn burners. They met in the playoffs a few times. Those games went back and forth. There was a great rivalry between these two teams. I'm glad they play each other. They're really like teams. Um, yeah, I think this is a game Monrovia has to win. I, I thought they were going to go 10 and 0 when the schedule came out. You know, La Cañada may give them a battle next week, but these are the next two weeks. These are the truth games for Monrovia because they're playing San Dimas and then they're going to open in league with La Cañada and we're going to, you know, they win those two games. They go undefeated. Nobody's going to touch them the rest of the way. I like them to go to San Dimas and win on Friday. I think they have to show everyone that those close wins against West Covina and, and Los Altos um, was not a reflection of, of who they are. I think they need to go in there and, and hammer San Dimas uh, the way that Bonita did win by at least 14 points. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, Freddie, I think the one thing Chris Williams is going to do is going to take a look at that San Dimas uh, Bonita tape really closely because I think there's major clues on how you can really exploit the Saints on defense. And I really do like um, Monrovia in this spot here, too. And, you know, you just look at the schedule, Freddie, it just sets up for a 10 and 0 season if they win Friday night, you know. Yeah, I mean, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't totally dismiss La Cañada. You know, they're, they're a team that. But you have to admit, t- if, you have a, if you put a point spread on that game, it's Monrovia by at least two touchdowns. You start to open, start the line. I, I, you know, maybe maybe it is, but you know, La Mirada, you know, they played a team that was four and zero last week. Um, this past weekend, there was two undefeated teams going at it, and La Mirada had La Cañada, La Cañada. I'm sorry, La right. Cañada had a big lead and gave that up late, and, and they lost. It was their first loss of the season, um, but they lost to a really really good team. Um, and like I said. Because Monrovia's had those close games with West Covina, the close game with Los Altos, 
I, I, you know, you can't just say that they're going to walk through a team like La Canada or walk through a team like San Dimas. Um, but I'm, I'm picking him to beat San Dimas by 14. But I think they've got to show us. They've got to show everyone the next two weeks why why they're in our top 10 and, and, and why there's all this buzz about them. I mean, uh, they have one of the best, you know, wide receivers in the area, best quarterbacks. Uh, their defense has been solid for the most point. It's, it's time for them this next two weeks to really put their foot down. And and these are their big two challengers. They, they've got to really show out, James. Campbell Hall was the team that La Canada yeah. lost to last week, 27 to 23. So we got two votes here for uh, Monrovia here. I may have to go to that game next week, Freddie, against La Canada. That might yeah. be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Be, That's that the league be, title you know, game. That's the know. league title game. You know, you know, ever since I've returned back to the Pasadena area, I have not attended a La Cunada football home game. I've gone to that other school up the hill, but not to the one at the bottom of the hill, yeah. other than to park your car, so to speak. So that's it. All right, Freddie. Well, they haven't given you a lot of reason un- until this year. <laughs> that is true. That is very true, my friend. <laughs> if we're not there, if we're not at these games, James, there's a reason. It's it's not that uh, it's not that we're biased. It's not that we don't like you. It's that you haven't been winning. They're winning now. So that's when we show up. We're front runners. Sports writers are front runners. We cover teams that are doing well each year. People got to, you got to realize that as has, has nothing to do with bias or we don't like your school. If you're winning, eventually we'll get there. And we'll rank you in the top 10, right? That's right. All right, Freddie. You know what time it is, right? It's no, that time. Jesus. It Bring is it time on. for the lightning round. That's right, everybody. We're going to go. I believe we got 10 games this week. We're going to go rifling through them here quickly. It is kind of an interesting schedule. So, all right. And Freddie was pretty good, by the way, last week, folks. He had some he had some nice winners last week. All right. Let's start with the Thursday nighter. Claremont to Benita. I sense a, a Benita route here. Yeah, I do, too. I, I, like I said, Benita's not going to. I think Benita's going to go 7-0 and until we get to league, and then we're going to see where they're at. Easy win for them. So Friday, Catwell is at Salesian. Catwell, another team that's one of our eight uh, undefeated teams in the area here, Freddie. Yeah, I like I like Catwell Sacred Heart, uh, James. That they they've played really well this year. Um, they're another team that's kind of snuck on us, snuck up on us in those battle of undefeated, just like you know San Gabriel is undefeated. I never saw that happening. I mean, there's there's some teams that are undefeated that we didn't. Bottle Park is undefeated. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like them for sure. Uh, Cathedral is at Muir. I like Cathedral. You know, that's a Mission League team. You know, this is the part of Mir's schedule where I just think they're overmatched. It was St. Francis last week. It's going to be Cathedral this week. But then I think they're going to get in the league, James, and they're going to be able to, you know, beat everyone. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to have a close game with Arcadia, close game with CB, and then they're going to lose to PHS. So, But this is the last time they get walloped until they play PHS at the end of the year. Lindora's got to battle the uh, he's got to battle the the cell phone coverage and go to Diamond Ranch. It's not exactly the favorable place to be if you're trying to cover a football game. But I think Lindora's got to be two touchdown favorites here, Freddie. Yeah, they are based on when you what, what you look at what you know Diamond Ranch some of their losses recently. Again, they didn't have a full squad. Now my understanding is you know because I get these DMs that the, the quarterbacks coming back this week. They're going to have some players come back when. Diamond Ranch is is completely healthy. They can they can win these games, James. But I do think that you know Glendora is on another level right now. Even even a, a fully healthy Diamond Ranch team isn't beating this Glendora game. The Glendora team. Next week is the game against Ayala. That's correct. Lucerna is at Culver City. I really like this game, Freddie. Oh, really, oh, really good is, game. This is a really, won. really nice game. Yeah, and, and Lucerna's won, you know, three straight games since the, you know, opening with back-to-back losses. Um, they haven't lost since, the, you know, the, the one against Warren, and we know how good Warren is. I And they lost to Bonita the first game of the season in overtime. I think they're going to go to Culver City and get this win and, and really kind of show people in the Del Rio League that they still are the favorite, despite what El Rancho and California are doing. I like that pick. Um yeah. Roland is at Nogales in the battle for the tracks, Freddie. Oh man, I, I, I mean, this is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take Nogales, James. I, you know, I like no, no, Nogales at home. Um, Roland's been decent in, in the last couple of years, but I think right now, you know, based on what's going on this season, I like Nogales to, to eat this one out. It'll be a close game. It'll be a good competitive game. Los Altos is at St. Francis. No hotter team right now in the in the West Side, with Freddie than St. Francis. Yeah, Los Altos is just playing a you know a tough schedule for them. You know, some of the teams they played having to play Glendora, now having to play St. Francis. They you know they played Monrovia, played them competitively. 
this won't be a competitive game, I don't think, on Friday. I like St. Francis to get on top of them quick, and I think by halftime we're gonna we're, we're gonna know which direction this game is going. Montclair is at Walnut, intriguing game here. I like Walnut this year, James. I think they're a favorite to to win their league. Um, you know, they they played West Covina, who you talked about earlier, very very competitively. I'm I'm gonna take Walnut. I'm I'm buying the Mustangs this year. Don Lugo is at Cal High, and I'm hoping that Vance Johnson returns at running back because he didn't play last week for Cal High, even though they won. Yeah, and, and there was no reason given, um, so we could kind of speculate probably what that reason is given the climate we're in this year. We don't need to say it. Nope. Um, he'll probably be back as my guess. And Don Lugo's really down this year. Uh, I, I think this is an easy win for Cal. Last one here, Freddie. Baldwin Park is at South Almonte. I'm really liking this uh, this uh, Bel- uh, Baldwin Park here t- uh, team here, Freddie. They're they're just they just continue to get these wins by big margins every week. Yeah, and Knight, the quarterback, uh, you know he's been he's been really good. James kind of you know lights out for them. Um, you know Rosemead, I thought was a formidable challenger, and it was close for a little while. They were able to put him away. Baldwin Park is one of those teams that's going to go undefeated, in my opinion. I just just look at the schedule the rest of the way. We'll see what division that puts them in. You know, the good thing about going undefeated when you're someone like Baldwin Park is you know, the opponents you played are really, really down low in the list. So you can go 10-0, and 0 and it's not going to put you in a Division 6 or 5 or even 7. They'll probably go 10-0 and 0 and still be in Division 8 or 9, uh, maybe even 10, and then we'll, we'll see what happens with them. But definitely a big bounce back year for Baldwin Park now that they were able to chase the coaches away from Sierra Vista and own the town again. <laughs> let's, just, let's just call a spade a spade. Uh, it's Baldwin Park's town, and, and they wanted it back. This was how they got it back. <laughs> so there you go, folks. We raffled through 10 games there on the on the lightning round here. Freddie, we have a quick minute uh, left here. I just want to ask you one thing I was thinking about this last night. I'm looking at the stock market today, and it's pretty hard on the downside. It's been on a, on a bit of a correction here. I don't know who's having a worse day or a worse five weeks, the stock market or South Hills football. Freddie, what has gone? I mean, I don't cover the East region as closely as you do. I don't. I haven't seen a team fall this fastly as South Hills. Well, yeah, and and it started when when Coach Bechtel left, right? You know, yep. they won the championship, and I think initially a lot of those players, a lot of the the you know Dylan Gutierrez, he was the South Hills kid, right? The, the, yep. the guy at South Hills, yep. prime example number one. He's over, he's a junior now. He's over at Damien. He's dominating over there. One of the best quarterbacks in the valley. You can't lose kids like that and just pick up where you left off. And, and they've had a lot of guys that have gone to neighboring schools. A lot of them, they've lost to, to Damien. You got to remember also, uh, you know, Albert Rodriguez, is, you know, who's a teacher at South Hills and have been part of that coaching staff, a former coach. He's over at, at Damien's football with Damien's football team as one of their assistant coaches. So I, I think part of it is, you know, guys who are playing, you know, football want to be in environments where they, they know they're going to win and, 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 South Hills is going through that uh, that phase right now, James. I don't know how they're going to get themselves out of it, to be honest with you, because winning is the way you get out of it, or you've got to do something that's going to attract that talent back. And I haven't seen anything that they've done as a football program that's really bringing that talent back. I mean, they're the third best team to me at Covina District Field, and I can't remember the last time I've ever I've ever said that. But I think Northview and Covina are both better. Yeah, um, no question. I, 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 I do. Um, South Hills isn't going to win a, a game in the league. It's just they've got to figure it out. They've got to ask themselves where they want to go from here. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I, I don't see this changing anytime soon, James. It's quite interesting. You know, I mean, South Hills was the flagship school of the Covina Valley Unified School District in football. There's back when I coached there, there was always the top 10. Look, they're Mm -hmm. always, always when I did rankings for, you know, almost every year, they're a top 10 team, top run pro. They're they're right there with, you know, the Charter Oaks and the Los Altos is historically those were the three. Those Mm -hmm. were the three that have been the most consistent over the last 20 years. Um, Things are changing. Yeah, you know, I don't, you know, South Hills, they're they're way down at the bottom of the list now. Ooh. So they've got a they've got a long way to go. Wow. At any rate, uh, one thing that's not uh, that's not terrible by any stretch, stretch of the imagination is what Freddie does every Friday night after all the action is over with, and that is the Friday. Yeah, evening wrap. that's the yeah, the Friday evening wrap. That's when we get all of the stories, James. We put it in a one stop shop. 
uh, with all the games we're covering. Uh, we have photo galleries from the games we're covering. Um, I'll have I'll include all the final scores. And look, it's going to be an exciting week. We're going to talk about the Bishop Amat Damien game on the other side. Um, this is the most anticipated game to me since uh, Charter Oak played Bishop Amat. And, and I forget that year. I want to say 2011 or 12, somewhere around there. That was uh, yeah. the streaker game. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's it's the biggest game uh, locally, you know, non-playoff game since then. I, I think the anticipation is unreal and it's going to be wild, wild at Kiefer on Friday night. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, we're going to talk about it on the other side of the video here, on our on a separate video here. But yes, we'll have the, the Friday evening wrap, which is consistently our number one viewed uh, story on our websites every Friday night. And you look at it Saturday morning, what's the number one? It's always the Friday evening wrap because everyone wants to know what happened on Friday night. So uh, we will have Donald Morrison, I believe, at the Monrovia San Dimas game. We're going to figure out somewhere where we're going to send John Sherrard, but uh, you kind of have an idea. John Sherrard, John Sherrard is going to cover Glendora at Diamond Ranch. Probably a good game. It's going to be yeah. a really good game. I like that game a lot. I think it's going to be, you know, I think, I, again, I think, you know, Glendora wins probably easily by the time the, the buzzer rings, but that's gonna that's an interesting game. And on any other week, I probably would be at that game. But yeah, I, I like how some games mysteriously moved to Friday. And I know there's an official. Sh- I mean, moved to Thursday this week. I know there's an official shortage. But boy, those teams playing Thursday know one thing: they get to go to Kiefer on Friday night and watch some football. <laughs> The whole valley is gonna. The whole valley is gonna move to Thursday night this week. We're gonna see games continue to move to Thursday to keep that Friday calendar open. It's also the bye week for a lot of teams too. That is correct. You know, it's gonna be wild, James. Let's go. I'm ready. Right. So we're gonna go on the other side of the video here. We're gonna talk about Damien and Bishop. Come on, and Bishop Mott. For now, I'm James. That's Freddie. We'll see you all down the road. Until next time, it's sayonara for now. <laughs>